All right. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Trojan Travel Webinar. Today, we're going to explore with USC. Uh, just a quick reminder that today, during our session, your cameras are off. Uh, so feel free to relax, enjoy your time with us. We're going to have a fun time talking about travel to some exotic places full of lots of nature and wonderful wildlife. As you did see, the session is being recorded. So we will be posting those on our website next week. This is a special one because Dan has a special offer for us as well. So you might want to be telling your friends to, to take a peek as well. Um, we do welcome questions. Please ask questions if you would like. There is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and you can click on it and type in your question there. The questions will not be seen immediately. So don't be worried if your question doesn't show up but as soon as we answer it or respond, you will see it and everybody can see that too. So we look forward to, well, to answering all of those questions. All right, so let's get started. Hopefully my lawnmower um, will not go off in the background. The gardeners are in our near my home office. So hopefully we will have a quiet time together. Welcome to the second in our series of travel webinars as we start looking ahead to 2021 and getting out and traveling again. This week, we are exploring all of the different types of tours offered by USC Trojan Travel, which is part of the USC Alumni Association. We are not a travel agency, although many we do offer many of the abilities and services that they do, but we can't book airfare and we can't do rental cars and some of those things. So our main focus is offering and arranging educational tours for our alumni and friends of the university to go around the United States and the world. For over almost 50 years, we've been offering these tours and they've been an amazing chance for people to discover the world as well as get to know each other and enhance the Trojan family. Alumni travel is a very unique and but a very special way to explore the world. Um, alumni travelers have certain things in common with each other. We often travel with other schools and we just love sharing the experiences and new places together. Today on the call, we have a small but mighty group, but we are excited to be recording this as well. And we're welcoming some past travelers, as well as some Trojans who are interested in learning more about our program. And I do know there are also a few of my travel planner colleagues from around the country. So welcome to all of you. It is no surprise, and everybody knows that this year travel has faced very unique challenges. And the, you know, since the world has virtually been shut down since the middle of March, the travel industry has faced challenges before, but never quite like this. We do know we will rebound, and we are even more grateful to work with tour operators who are the finest in the business. And we are excited to partner again with Orbridge on wonderful tours as we begin to travel again and have group tours going out into the world. Hopefully you saw that last week we released our 2021 catalog of tours and those are on our website, but we're now excited to take a deeper dive into what it means to explore with USC. What are expedition cruises? Where are some of those special places that we are going that are kind of hard to get to on your own? So today it is a Real pleasure to welcome and introduce Dan Stipa. He is the Director of Sales for Orbridge. In his role, Dan partners with various nonprofit organizations and alumni associations like ours to help provide small group educational travel experiences for our members. Dan manages those partnerships with organizations throughout the country and serves on his company's leadership team. In his role, he has been involved in helping Orbridge strategically navigate the changing travel landscape, especially in regards to COVID-19. I'll just jump in and mention too that Orbridge has taken a lot of steps to make sure that your safety and wellness are at the top of their priority list. Dan served for four years on the Global Educational Travel Council Advisory Board. And prior to joining Orbridge last year, he worked for over eight years at Rice's, you know, at Rice in Texas, where he was the manager of their alumni travel program. So he has a great understanding of both sides of the educational travel industry. He has seen the alumni perspective, as well as now working as part of one of the tour operators. So please join me in welcoming Dan Stipa to our call today. 
Hey there, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. And Linda, thank you for uh, hosting this session and that great introduction. Um, as Linda said, as I get my screen share set up, um, prior to joining Orbridge in the middle of last year, um, I worked at Rice University managing that travel program. So having a real um, understanding and appreciation for the value that this small group alumni educational travel has. And so what I wanted to first start with before I kind of dive into the exciting destinations that we have the pleasure of partnering with um, in 2021 is to kind of set the stage about what travel looks like today. Um, Orbridge is one of the very few operators that has actually had a few tours operate. Um, a, a section of our portfolio of programs are small group um, domestic tours in particular to the national parks and so um, between the end of july and um, wrapping up just last week we had six different national parks tours that were able to successfully operate um, with enhanced protocols in place and I had the pleasure of joining the very first one. And so to help kind of set the stage about what travel looks like today, I thought it would be helpful and important to take a, a, a kind of a photo tour of what may feel and look different. So I have a few slides of different photos, starting off with the arrival experience. And so um, I am based in Houston, Texas. And so I fly out of the large um, George Bush International Airport. And these photos were taken when I arrived to the airport at around nine in the morning on a Wednesday. And prior to COVID, that would be obviously a very busy time at really any airport, but especially a large airport like Houston, which is United's, um, one of the United's largest hubs. And that's where I was flying out of. On the left hand side of your screen, you can see what the airport shuttle vans look like. Um, when I arrived there, we're waiting in line for guests to arrive and you see a wide variety of those seats blocked off to promote social distancing. And then once I got into the terminal, um, as you can see, literally not a single person at the ticket counters. Um, and I know that travel has picked up slowly, but surely I'm actually on the road as we speak. Um, but my experience at the airport, even yesterday, um, was quite similar to this. And so from the very beginning, once you arrive your gateway to your gateway airport, it will feel and look different than what you are probably used to if you haven't yet traveled since COVID-19 has started to impact our world. And then once we arrived on tour, as Linda said, the health and well-being of our guests has always been and will be our top priority. Um, and so with these tours that guests opted to continue participating on, we took a variety of steps to ensure that health and wellness was promoted as best as possible. So on this tour, we had 18 travelers, including myself, our expedition, and our um, tour director. And so for those 18 of us, um, we used the motor coach that held 55 travelers. And so there is an abundance of space while on tour to have empty rows. We staggered the seating and everyone maintained their same seat throughout the tour um, just to help with that, um, to promote that space on the motor coach. Every night, and this is moving forward as well, but every night the buses get that electric static spring, um, in addition to your typical wiping down all of the touch, high touch surfaces with the, with the disinfectant wipes, having hand sanitizer on board. But um, you see what it looks like on a motor coach, we're no longer um, now and for the foreseeable future will we be having those coaches full of travelers. On the right hand side of the screen, you see what it looks like at one of the group functions. And so it's a little bit challenging to tell in this photograph that I took, but this room typically would host about 100 individuals, but was set up to accommodate with spacing our 18 total travelers. And so few people per table, uh, large spaces in between those tables. And in the back, you see where the food it would be set up. Um, buffets are kind of a thing of the past. Um, those have been replaced by served meals, or if it is like a buffet style, it's um, plated by um, attendants just to eliminate um, the communal touching of utensils and plates and whatnot. And so all throughout, um, really a goal is to minimize those common touch surfaces. Here are some photos from one of the museums and attractions that we visited, an archaeological dig site. 
And while on tour, you see in these different photos, um, folks are wearing face coverings. And that is a thing that will kind of maintain moving forward for the foreseeable future, especially in indoor settings, and especially when it might be a little bit more challenging to promote that social distancing. Um, but in addition to our travelers, and these protocols are shared um, well in advance, as well as with final documents, as well as any minor updates that may be in, uh, necessary um, two weeks prior to departure. So we really are striving to maintain that ongoing guest communication to make sure that all of our guests um, are, know that they are taken care of and have all of the latest updates. Since as we know, the guidance and kind of the recommendations do continue of, to evolve. Um, but in addition to the guests that we have on board, all of our local guides are also um, wearing face coverings, having hand sanitizer available, because we really strive to create essentially a bubble of travelers. Um, and so with this, um, we are introducing even more private experiences. So at this um, archaeological dig site, for example, we adjusted the timing of the itinerary such that we were able to arrive before other um, tourists were there. And so really, we were the only group there before the archaeological dig site opened, just as another method, not only to promote and provide an exclusive experience for these travelers, but also to help maintain that, um, that safety from others who may be visiting. Here are also some photos um, from outdoors. And so, as I said, this was a national parks tour. And so on the left-hand side of the screen, you see the lectures. <clears throat> and one of the real advantages, um, having both been on the Alumni Association side and now being on the tour operator side of going with um, Trojan Travel and other um, small group alumni travel is that um, there's an increased and heavy focus on the education. And so, while you are certainly seeing and experiencing and exploring sites that are hopefully have been on your bucket list, there is that rich educational um, component that is woven in throughout the tour. So when possible, we've eliminated now moving forward having indoor um, lectures or seminars. And so when the weather is appropriate and when there are spaces to do such, um, we have those now outdoors. And so Kent, who was our expedition leader, who was a former National Park Ranger, you see standing up there, uh, is giving a talk and we're at the base of Mount Rushmore in that photo. And so he's talking about the history that went into the creation of that national monument. And so, um, Rather than having that at the hotel before we got onto the road for the day, um, we actually were having that in the moment. So it's actually kind of a nice evolution that's been brought about as a result of the current um, situation. And then on the right hand side of the screen, this is just to demonstrate, at least for now, the minimal crowds. And so obviously we understand that everyone's risk tolerance is different. Um, we provided opportunities for guests to postpone travel, to reschedule, to rebook to a later date if they wanted to. Um, but there are still folks out there today that want to travel with these enhanced precautions in place. And so this photo was taken at Yellowstone and Kent, the, the expedition leader that we had, him and I were having dinner just the t uh, together one evening while on tour. And he estimated that um, for the middle or end of July when we were there, the crowds were probably no more than 50% of what they typically would have been um, in July at Yellowstone National Park. And so really our guests were the only kind of tourists that were all traveling together. Every single place that we went where we, we were the only motor coach. And so while that's great for now and kind of provides providing these exclusive experiences, um, we are starting to see the travel industry starting to make slow um, rebounds, especially domestically and closer to home. And so by 2021, when we uh, kind of dive into talking about the trips that we'll offer with Trojan Travel, then we do anticipate that our, and are optimistic that while the crowds won't be what they were pre-COVID right away, um, that they still will be smaller than what they had been. And so in summary, um, before I kind of transition into talking about future tours, I think, as I said, these enhanced protocols are here to stay. And so 
face coverings, elimination of shared products, um, providing single serve products, so condiments and salt and pepper and even like uh, things like that. Those will be here to stay for quite some time. Um, as well as if you've been on these types of tours, you know that sometimes while on the motor coach, maybe the the, the lecturer or an expedition leader passes around some photos to see or passes around a sign-up sheet for what entree you want for dinner that evening. Those types of um, objects that are passed around, those are eliminated and will be for some time. And so there's a real shared responsibility for the group's health and safety while on tour. And so moving forward, that is impacting what travel looks like. And so the tours that I'll be talking about in just a few seconds, um, you will see those enhanced sanitation protocols. And um, we, um, we are already seeing that more and more travelers are considering travel insurance. And so prior to COVID-19, um, travel insurance was purchased by a decent number of travelers, um, even if they were healthy and had no real concern about something happening, but especially in, in light of COVID-19, um, we do, we are seeing more and more travelers purchasing travel insurance. And so with that, hopefully that kind of whets your appetite and see and helps you see what travel looks like, that it's possible. And I will say um, that the itinerary was exactly what it was supposed to be. Um, we aside from modifying the timing of a few site visits to provide more opportunities for social distancing, everyone got to experience um, what was originally promoted a year prior to when they registered for that trip. And so um, now we're going to take a look at the five tours that we're really proud to offer with Trojan Travel moving forward. So in chronological order, the first one is our Galapagos Islands tour. And this program, I've been on it twice and can't speak highly enough about it. With this program, a real difference maker about this and other um, similar Galapagos Islands cruises that you might find is that we exclusively charter the Isabella II um, for our guests. And so all the guests who are on this tour, it's a maximum of 40 travelers on that small cruise expedition vessel um, will be with other alumni associations. And so um, the educational enrichment what that's woven throughout from the different universities, as well as the onboard naturalists, really makes this a different experience than if you were to just sign up for a cruise to the Galapagos independently. So our itinerary, you start with a full day in Quito. And during that time in Quito, you have a full day there where there's a, a, um, a strong emphasis on people to people interaction. So while anyone could go to Quito for a day or a day or two and kind of check off some of the highlights from kind of a tourist guide, what we do is in, um, integrate and infuse elements of local culture throughout that time in the city. So we visit a local cacao factory, for example, and we have the owner of that factory who goes and harvests the beans. Gives a, gives a talk with our group and talks about the really rich and sometimes surprising history of chocolate as it relates to Ecuador. And so the group gets to touch and taste and smell what that experience is. is. And that's generally not something that's open to the public. And so that's just one example of even while in Quito that sets this program apart from what you would find kind of on the mass market as well as having a hosted lunch with local residents that are available to engage with our travelers. And then once our time in Quito is um, wrapped up, we take a flight over to the Galapagos. And so when our group arrives in the Galapagos Island, we start on Santa Cruz Island. And while there, we have a private visit to the, um, the, the tortoise um, breeding center. And so while there, the group divides up. So like I said, it's a maximum of 40 total travelers on this tour. The group breaks up into about groups of 10 and each group is led by a, um, a resident expert. And you walk through this preserve and this breeding center where you're able to understand the significant impact that the tortoise has had in helping understand this really rich ecosystem. And once we wrap up our time there, then we make our way over to the East Isabella too. And like I said, this is an expedition style vessel. And so while it has all of your modern amenities that you need to feel comfortable, including air that circulates from the outside, um, 
um, full meals with um, wine included at dinner, um, the lounge space, um, premium linens and bathroom amenities. Um, it is an expedition vessel. It's not a, a large one of those um, luxury ocean going vessels, but that really adds to the, to the essence of this experience while in the islands. And so while in the Galapagos, you have um, free and total access to all of the um, water equipment. So if you want to go kayaking, if you want to go paddle boarding, snorkeling, that's all included. Um, once you get to Quito, um, you have all of your excursions included, gratuities are included to the local guide as well. So you're not really having to pay out of pocket, so to speak, once you arrive. Um, and while on the Galapagos each day, you have some different guided visits to um, nature hikes, you are able to go on glass bottom boating, but then there's um, an, a, a enough time for travelers, like I said, if you want to do some of those water sports or attend an onboard naturalists lecture, you're able to do so. On, while on the Galap while on the Isabella II, there are there's one naturalist for about every 12 uh, guests that are on board. So when you're out on the zodiac and you're um, coasting right up against the shoreline, you always have a naturalist with you who is helping you understand and make sense of what you're seeing. So as I said, this is a Galapagos, and we are offering this in August. And um, prior to there's the optional Mach P Lodge pre tour. And then at the end, an optional post tour to Machu Picchu. So that is the Galapagos. Our next tour that we're proud to offer is our Toronto to Vancouver by rail program. With this program, there is the optional pre-tour to Toronto and Niagara Falls. And then at the conclusion of the main tour, there is the optional post-tour to Victoria. So with this program, what I really like to emphasize is that this is a train experience. And so I know it's a little hard to see just kind of on a screen, but as Linda said, these are posted online and in the catalog. But in that map, you are making your way all the way across Canada. However, with that being said, when you stop at the different cities while en route, you do get to get off the train. You generally spend about an hour or so, depending on kind of the timing um, in these different cities. And so with that being said, if Winnipeg, for example, is on your bucket list, even though Winnipeg is included on this itinerary, just know that you won't be spending like a full day along in, each, in any of these cities while traveling on the rail. This is that quintessential rail experience. And on the left-hand side, you see that glass dome. And so our group of travelers, no more than 26, on this, so it's that really small group uh, private experience has access to that dome car. So as you are traveling through Canada, you are able to see and experience the changing landscapes, the 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 wildlife that you see. And so while on board, you are spending a lot of time on the train, but all throughout the journey, there are naturalists and lectures, lecturers who are giving you talks about what you're seeing in real time and a history about what um, landscapes you're seeing. And there is the guaranteed viewing of the Canadian Rockies during the daylight. And so that's a real highlight for guests on this tour before ending in Vancouver. And once in Vancouver, there is a full, full day tour of that city. And so this is one of those bucket list experiences Everyone on tour um, stays in the prestige class staterooms um, with the luxury linens that um, has a sofa that converts into a, a, the, the full size bed. And then our group does have um, complimentary snacks and beverages, including um, really anything that you would want 24 hours a day. So this is our Toronto to Vancouver by rail program that we're offering in September. Our next program is our Polar Bears of Churchill program. And so with this program, I was up there um, just last November, and it really is something special. You see that photo up at the top right hand side, and the bears do come right up to our Arctic crawlers. And so this program, we offer it um, with Trojan Travel October 21st through the 26th. And this is a six day program where we start in Winnipeg. And so upon arrival in Winnipeg, um, we have a 
private and behind the scenes experience at the Assiniboine Zoo. They have a um, into the Arctic experience and that is um, open to our group after hours while no other visitors are at the zoo. And while there, we have our welcome reception, a dinner. We have a lecturer who comes and talks about research that is um, pertaining to the polar bears. And so it's a really special way to kick off your time in Manitoba. And then the next day we make our way up to Churchill. And so we fly up to Churchill and it is a place really unlike anywhere I've been. It is incredibly remote as you would imagine and expect. Um, the town has a few hundred um, full-time residents that live there. And so you feel even though you're not off the grid, so to speak, there's obviously heat and electricity and Wi-Fi and everything like that. You really do feel especially um, that you are kind of in this remote and exotic area. And so a real highlight of this program is spending two full days on these Arctic crawlers. And so the Arctic crawlers are those vehicles that you see on the right hand side that have a full bathroom heated. There is um, hot chocolate um, generally in the eve or in the afternoons there's um you can make like hot chocolate with baileys or there's sodas or local beers that are available for you to enjoy while out um looking at these bears and so um, we have an, um, a significantly larger area that we're now able to explore um, thanks to our relationship with the Manitoban government that we've been able to secure. And so while on these crawlers, you will be exploring and seeing a lot of this area where these polar bears are. And then in the evenings, um, there are lectures that happen that are available in the lodge. So you stay at Lazy Bear Lodge, and this is a lodge that has been in one family kind of ownership for um, for generations and it has been built by Wally. He actually joins you and is available for dinner and kind of makes his presence known throughout the lodge while our group is there. And so while, while you're in the lodge, it really um, is that special kind of cabin experience. Um, and then one of the evenings for those who want to join, it is included, um, but sometimes folks just want to kind of enjoy time at the lodge. Um, there's also a nighttime dog sledding experience where um, we take the group um, to learn about the rehabilitation and all these dogs have been rescued from um, not the best of situations. And so um, we learn about that. And then for those who want, they are able to go on a dog sledding journey. And so this program is October 21 to 26th of next year. Our next program is India. And so while oftentimes when you think of a destination like India, there is of course, um, the history, the culture, the religion, and we, of course, learn all about that. And so um, one of the really special experiences with our tour is that we'll have two private visits to the Taj Mahal towards the beginning of the tour, one at sunset, and then the following day at sunrise. And so you get to um, experience and um, kind of witness this really iconic um, architecture at different times of day as the sun is rising and the sun is setting. Um, and then throughout this tour, similar like I was speaking about with the Galapagos, is we have woven in an abundance of people to people interactions that you really quite honestly would be hard pressed to get on your own if you were to go to India. Um, so for example, we have a home hosted dinner where our travelers will go to a local home, learn about the ingredients, participate in with the family in making that meal and enjoying that kind of really personal time with that family. Other highlights of those people to people at interactions include um, a yoga session. So those who might be inclined to enjoy an experience like that, um, we have a, a local um, individual come and join the group and talks about not only yoga, but then the, the cultural significance of that in the Indian culture. With all that being said, the wildlife is strong throughout this program, and that is something that sets this itinerary apart from some of the other ones that um, you may find if you were to kind of consider planning an, uh, your own trip to India. So, for example, we visit um, Kialadio um, National Park, and so here there's over 400 species of different birds, and so we spend time here where we're learning about those. We have a naturalist who will be joining us 
to talk about these so that we can dive deeper into that. Another example is Ranthambore. So we include a visit to Ranthambore National Park. And so here, obviously the tigers are a real treasure and kind of the highlight of that experience, but there's also the mongoose, the desert fox, um, 50 plus species of butterflies. And so with our, with our itinerary, we, like I said, really strive to um, complement the cultural and historical significance of India with the, um, the abundance of wildlife that's there. And then the end of the tour is really incredibly special. So you end your experience at the Taj Lake Palace, which is a former summer palace that has been um, converted into an exquisite hotel on uh, Lake Pachola. And so here um, it's only accessible by ferry and you will have that opportunity to end your tour there before flying back to Delhi um, at the end. And so with, these, with this tour and the others, all of these internal flights that I have referenced are all included with your program price. There are no additional fees for any of that additional airfare or airfare that takes place throughout. And that is in November. And then last but certainly not least is our civil rights program. And so this is a, a shorter program closer to home late next year. Um, and so with this program, we will be um, in Birmingham and Montgomery um, learning about the civil rights movement. And with this program, we are so proud um, and honored that we will have six foot soldiers who will be joining us throughout the itinerary to talk about um, the significance of what has happened in this part of the country and then expanded further. And so everything from having a privately led walk across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, visiting the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice. I was here a couple of years ago and it really is incredibly moving. And um, it is a, a, a conversation that happens that um, can be quite heavy, but there is opportunity to enjoy that local cuisine, um, the music, the other cultural elements. And so while it certainly um, has that, that heaviness, um, there are obviously elements of kind of fun and enjoyment that are woven in throughout. And so with this tour, we do partner with the Alabama Civic Rights um, Tourism Association. And so through the through our participation and those guests on this tour, we are helping to support locally owned um, African American and women owned businesses throughout the tour. And so those in summary are the five tours that we are offering with Trojan Travel. But as I said at the beginning, we understand that travel right now can seem a little risky or a little bit daunting. And so we really have tried to enhance our policies to be as guest friendly as possible. And so first off, we, like I said earlier, do have the enhanced health and wellness protocols. And so those are online on our website right now. And if you go to the Trojan Travel or Bridge co-branded website, um, you can find a link to that as well, um, but also the increased flexibility. So there's a reservation grace period now where you have 30 days from date of reservation to receive a full refund of your deposit if you were to um, decide to cancel in that first 30 days. And then essentially from day 31 up until 90 days prior to departure, we have eliminated all of our cancellation fees. And so now there you receive a refund of the majority of the money. Um, and then the remaining portion is held as a future travel credit that's good for the two following calendar years. So if you were to sign up for any of these 2021 tours and then decided to cancel at least 90 days in advance, you really wouldn't be out any money and you would be able to use that future travel credit through the end of 2023. And then if you make a cancellation within 90 days, um, we have significantly reduced what those fees are compared to prior years. And so for anyone who has attended us and taken your time um, that I know is so valuable and precious to join us today, um, if you sign up online for any of these um, or bridge Trojan travel tours, um, you will receive a $125 discount. Just type in Trojan travel virtual event or something similar to that. There's an additional information box on the res reservation form. Just put that in there and I automatically get copied on every single reservation that comes in. And so I will assure that your account is accredited um, or provided that discount. And uh, like Linda said at the beginning, this event is recorded. So if you re watch this recording and 
still book before that October 30th date, you are still um, eligible and welcome to obviously join us, but receive that $125 discount per person. And so with all of that, I wanna thank all of you for joining us, Linda and your team for um, your partnership with Orbridge and these great tours. And if there are any questions, I will be most happy to answer them. Thank you, Dan. It's been so great hearing about all of this and we really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Um, we have a few questions that have just been come up not necessarily during this, but along the way. So I just thought I would talk these through with you. We could have a little bit of a conversation if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, on one of the tours, you were talking about the domestic tours. You talked about going to the site early. Are all of your itineraries able to kind of pivot like that? And are you able to make adjustments along the way depending on crowds or even maybe political unrest that may be going on somewhere. I mean, there's a lot of things that can go on on tours. So are you able to, with I, with your grand, grand staff, mm -hmm. to be able to pivot and shift? Certainly, yeah, great question. So we certainly can. And so a lot of the, op the operators that we've used, we've used since we've been, since we started 15 years ago. And so we have really strong relationships with our ground suppliers. And so leading up to the tour, if there's anything that be needs to be modified, we can, but certainly while on the ground, if something were to happen, or if there was to be an outbreak of COVID or something else, or like you said, some type of political unrest, um, we ha we are certainly able to and have had to in the past at um, time. So yeah, that's certainly something we're able to do. That's really great because I think that's one of the real benefits of traveling mm -hmm. with a group like this is that you have extra eyes on the ground to kind of look ahead and see what's coming and what you may be. I remember being in Athens one time and we avoided a certain area at a certain time of the day so that we didn't get caught in the, in the unrest that was going on. So that's fantastic. Um, and I would actually add, and this is again, worst case scenario, but still just kind of another, like you said, kind of a value of traveling with a group like this is that heaven forbid the group needed to leave the country early, that something happened um, with our ground staff there. They are able to help every traveler, even if they didn't book air with us, to help coordinate new tickets to kind of get out of there if needed. And so while certainly we don't want that ever to happen, like that's just, that is another benefit of having our ground staff that's there in country on the ground with our travelers that can help versus just having to kind of wait on hold with an airline or something like that. Yeah, that that is absolutely amazing to have that support because there's nothing a little more frightening than being in an airport and being not sure how you're getting out of there. Um, so it is definitely a benefit. For the ship, you mentioned in the Galapagos, you mentioned there were a maximum of 40 travelers. Mm -hmm. Is that the Mac, is that the capacity of that ship or is it operating at a less than capacity number? Great question. So that is the maximum capacity of the trip. And so um, we are certainly able to operate with less than that. And so whether it's um, with bookings that aren't 40 or if depending on kind of what's happening with COVID and health um, kind of uh, world dynamics at that point, we can certainly um, kind of lower that if needed, but 40 would be a maximum on that program total. Okay, that's great. That's a, that's a, that's a really nice number to have. It gives you lots of space to have, especially in such a beautiful place where you're outdoors. Yeah. Um, some travelers have expressed concern about making their plans when borders in many countries remain closed. You guys have done a really great job of extending and modifying your cancellation policies. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that you're recommending to people that they look at or their timing of the reservation? Anything you're suggesting? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're suggesting to all guests right now is to look into travel insurance. Um, we understand that um, travelers have different risk tolerances or if they may have something that happens in their family life or them personally. So one of the things that has been um, that's kind of evolved throughout this entire past year is recognizing the real value of travel insurance. So that is our first and kind of primary recommendation. Um, but with that being said, also understanding that when you travel with a tour operator like Orbridge, that if you do sign up for, say, for example, the polar bears program that we're offering, obviously right now, U.S. visitors can't on, on leisure aren't able to go into Canada. But if 
guests sign up for that tour, we, we generally make decisions about 60 or so days prior to departure. So if 60 days, so if next August we had travelers sign up for that um, polar bears program and heaven forbid the border is still closed, we would then of course work on rescheduling, rebooking, providing flexibility. And so we understand that um, kind of the idea of planning for a a big investment like a travel experience, but hopefully with kind of that peace of mind of um, different travel insurance protections, as well as um, knowing that the company that you're traveling with is flexible and it's a partnership with you that we want to make sure that your guests are taken care of, that hopefully that kind of provides some peace of mind as folks start thinking about the future. Yeah, and you did a great job talking about kind of all of the precautions and things that you're taking I would presume, I mean, we're going to be living in an era, in an era going forward of, like you said, a lot of those things are here to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, a lot is going to depend on local regulations where you're traveling. Exactly. Uh -huh. And that um, a great example would be some of our Egypt tours are going to look very different than our national parks tours, for example. And so the website that I shared with everyone has our overarching protocols that are in place for every tour, regardless of destination. But then depending on where a get traveler signs up, they'll, they'll be provided um, essentially a point of reservation through departure, different country and local specific guidelines. And so um, whether that is uh, face covering requirements or spacing in public spaces, whatever it might be. So we make sure that we provide the guests that local information depending on what tour they've registered for. That's great. And then what if a tour can't take place? What happens? What what do you, what what is what is the process or what's 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 been going on this year with tours that couldn't take place? Yeah. So generally what will happen in those cases is that we will work with the institution. So if any of these programs with Trojan Travel needed weren't able to operate on the date scheduled, we would work with you to find an, a new date and essentially postpone, reschedule the program. Um, obviously that safety and security is our top priority. And so um, with this type of travel, um, that the postponement and the rescheduling is generally what happens. And so with that, we, do, we don't just tell guests that, okay, your new travel date is February of 2022. We provide that as an option that has been kind of mutually agreed upon with the university, but then provide other options. So if that date doesn't work or if the guest doesn't feel comfortable traveling, they can have the money, any monies paid held for future travel. They can, can go on a different departure date. So we really do try, try to provide as much flexibility as we can should a tour not be able to operate on the planned dates. That's wonderful. Well, you guys have been very, very flexible and we really look forward to having our tours. What if somebody wants to do one of the tours that you mentioned that we're not sponsoring? Can they join you? Definitely. So any tour um, that a guest might want to join, if you go to orbridge.com, we have all of our itineraries listed. We have about 30 different programs all around the world. And so when you go to sign up, there's a a spot on the reservation form that says um, like sponsoring organization. So any Trojan traveler guest can just put in USC or Trojan travel. And even though it's not officially sponsored by um, Trojan travel, that would ensure that your guests receive the alumni association pricing, would receive all of the kind of the, the benefits that are associated with this type of travel. And then of course you would be informed and kind of kept in the loop throughout. So even if it's a non-official USC Trojan travel tour, you and your team would know about them traveling and be kept in the loop if anything were to happen with that particular departure date. Yeah, a lot of our, a lot of alumni like to travel, you know, yeah. they have maybe a different date that they want to go somewhere yeah. or they really want to go somewhere that we just don't happen to be going in a particular year. So we are always thankful that they can join up with other groups. And we often travel with other universities as well, which is really adds to the experience and makes it a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I will say for all five tours in particular that we're offering, we have many different departures. So in particular, if you have, if there are Trojan travelers who enjoy one of these five tours, but that particular date that we have worked on together isn't, doesn't work, um, know that there are multiple departures of all of these tours as well as our other ones, but in particular, these five that we're working on together. Well, we are very excited and there are a number of these that I have not been to yet. So I am looking forward to hopefully joining in as well. Certainly. Um, 
I think that's it for the questions. So I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think everybody on the call will join me as well to thank you for being here today and taking time out of your day um, from your beautiful national park background. Yeah. Um, we always have great groups on our orbits tours and we love your attention to detail and especially now group safety as we look, go forward. We are so optimistic about getting back to travel very soon and we hope if you we hope you'll join us. If you have any other questions, be sure to email me at the office and I will be happy to get those answers or put you in touch with Dan directly. Um, at this point, I will say thank you to Dan. So you are excused and mm -hmm. I'm just going to remind everybody about our other sessions that we have coming up this week. So let's see if we have that slide. All right, well, I don't see that slide coming up. Okay, it's just one second and we'll have the slide. But we do have three more sessions this week and we're these are have been really fun and we're excited to continue on doing these. Um, tomorrow, we will be talking about bucket trip sporting events. So there we'll be discussing the Kentucky Derby, the Masters, the Ryder Cup, wonderful, wonderful sporting events that are hard to get to on your own. And we have lots of added events and things that go along with them. We also, here we go. And then also on Thursday, we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna, it's called Remember with USC, but these are tours that we're working with the National World War II Museum to put together. They have curated the most magnificent tours and we will be partnering with them for a couple of those coming up next year as well. And then finally on Friday, we're gonna talk about cruising with USC. Um, we're gonna have a guest from Oceana Cruises join us. One of their executives will be on the call with us. Uh, cruising got a really bad, got really bad press. There were some bad situations on some of those mega ships early on, but there's a lot that the cruise industry is doing. And we're really confident that when cruising begins, we're gonna be in really, really great place and everybody's gonna have a wonderful time. So we thank you for joining us. That is what is coming up. And um, again, please join us for another one of your session of these sessions or tell your friends to look online. The recordings will be posted next week. So thank you for visiting us and spending your lunch hour. Have a great afternoon. Bye.